and social sciences, geography and history, basically a lot of subjects. In 1989, sorry, he left school teaching to develop community initiatives and consultancy work. He first of all, he co-formed Kinetic Educational Guidance, a community resource aimed at filling the gaps in cultural, in cross-cultural education, sorry. In 1998, Paul formed Ovid Developments Limited, a consultancy aimed at the development of multicultural resources. From 2000 to the present, Paul Obina has facilitated personal and professional development services for mentors, college lecturers, school teachers and nursery workers, police counsellors, police officers, sorry, youth and community workers, government committees, think tanks, housing officers and counsellors. His specialities are overcoming social exclusion, constructive awareness of race-related issues and engaging in disaffected behaviours. All of Paul's sessions are delivered from a strong foundation of psychology and, and history. Sorry. I find this kind of thing, you know, when you listen to what people say, you've done and everything. I don't remember any of it. Um, I kind of try to keep in the moment, and uh, yeah, hopefully, what I can do this evening is uh, pick up on some of the points from Dinah. Uh, Dinah, did I teach you at one time? I did. You see, you see these people? Yeah. I've been having people say, that I was a horrible guy as a teacher. I was a kind, loving, gentle, calm, educator. Yeah, he's joking. That's what I did, isn't it? Sorry. Um, yeah, so let me press on. I'm gonna move very quickly, because later, Lance, stand up and say hello, please. That, that's Lance Lewis, he's coming on after that. And, uh, he, he's, he's had a little bit of a time off and a difficult time recently. So what I'm going to do, I'm a little tired tonight. I drove up from London today to be here. And, um, yeah. <laughs> My name Paul Obina. It actually means, it's an Igbo word from Eastern Nigeria. It means heart's father. Paul is from my English mother. Obina is from my Igbo father or Nigerian father. So I use these two names when I'm dealing with a lot of cultural issues. Does that make sense? I deal with cross-culture, yeah? I'm very proud of both of my heritages, which are English and Igbo. Very proud. The only thing is, they generally don't get on. Does that make sense? <laughs> so when people turn around and go like, you know, Paul was it? People used to say, oh, Paul would be the cartoon black history, you know, because he's an half-breed. You understand know me? 
I say my mother comes from Horton, England. By your dad, by Blackburn. And my father comes from a wary Imo state, Nigeria. So out of 11.6 million square miles, I know exactly where my genes are from. Does that make sense? So I've got no apology to make to anybody about my culture. Does this make sense? And that can be very, very, sorry, sometimes can be quite a lot when people start to get property. Does that make sense? I said people say, oh, I'm not right. He's right. In actual fight, when I go to the village in Nigeria, they call me on your child, which means white man. Does this make sense? I go to South Africa, South Africa, I'm colored. I go to the Caribbean, and red or yellow, depending on how much sun I've had. I go to, I go to the USA, I could be African American, I could be, uh, what else there, Puerto Rican, Latino, or whatever. I go to South America, I was in Brazil for three and a half years, and uh, they call me, uh, what was it, Mulato Claro. It means light skin, or quite light skin. Almost like master, my eyes are green, and like, my hair's loose, but it's a bit like Malcolm X who was also red skin. Does that make sense? I've got no apologies to make, which is why I'm starting off like that. So anybody who wants, do you, sorry, so let's start with this. Do you have any questions? Any questions? <laughs> any questions? Do you have any questions for me? Who's been you? I don't speak Igbo, I hear this. <laughs> and do you know my shame? I was in a house with my son speaks Igbo, my, my wife speaks Igbo, she's Igbo, my, my father-in-law, three people Igbo speakers in the house. I am thick. I'm from Blackburn. <laughs> I don't. I don't hear languages easily at all. At all. At all. At all. At all. However, however, we have to keep learning. Yes, sir. Um, you're saying that you're proud of your of your heritage. Yes. So when I ask you this question, like, what do you mean by that? Because we know we live in a world where there's one side oppressive. And you have white supremacy, and then you have the black side. So, how, how does that feel for you as a white person? If you, if you look at what side do you feel like means that support, what side are you feel in terms of that mindset? So what you're saying is that there'd be a clash between black and white, yes? Yeah, well, I understand um, what you're saying for me, but sure, well, I'm for me personally, yeah. I say people are on that side, oh, yeah, that's yeah. how I see it. But I know that the white side tends to not see which way people have it. That size of where you No side. nation, cut your skin to blood. Right, right, watch this. The word heritage says her, it, age. It's the age of it in her. Y'all don't know white culture, because white culture was battered from 1480 to 1780, and they murdered all the women. It's called the witch hunts. What you've actually got, if you actually look on, uh, on uh, in history, you've got a thing called the, uh, uh, the Renaissance and then the Enlightenment. And at this time, this is when people come out of the Dark Ages in this country, yeah, across Europe. And what happens at that time, that they say is a high development of European culture, that's when they were murdering their women. Between 9 and 14 million women who look like my mother. Does this make sense? So you see, I know that heritage properly. You understand? White people don't know how to use their pineal gland. Get the, get, shut up! You mean they don't know how to use their pineal gland? They're calcified. That's where they're beating your asses, isn't it? Because they don't know how to think. What stupidness is that? No, but I was more kind of saying, I don't feel like this is an attack, I'm just trying to get... No, 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 don't, hey, listen man, don't, believe me, when you attack, you open yourself. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So as I was saying now, I understand that, I'm not trying to throw shade on a race or anything like that. Right. I'm talking about the clash that's been happen, happening on signs and memorial. Like Where's your family from? from? Jamaica. Out of Jamaica, out of many one people. So you're in actual fight, you've got a beating up going on in your in your genetic code. That it's just not literally there, is it? No! It's not in your face. You can't see it like that. You understand me? Now the thing is, unless you actually go into your gene pool, into your genius, as I say, the genes in us, unless you can do that and calm, you won't have peace ever with yourself. Does this make sense? No, no, no. I take a Jamaican called Marcus Garvey. He said, if you have no confidence in self, you are twice defeated in the race that is life. With confidence, you have won even before you've started. But I'm not talking about the, uh, the confidence, I'm talking about the clash, the white. The, cla the white and black clash, right? If you look at this thing, race was invented as a concept by white people. 
Um, why would you? Not why? Really, no, not really. Sorry. What do you mean, not really? You can go back to Africa and find that. Is Which part of Africa? And Egypt. You can see Egypt is a white culture. Why you go to Kemet? Kemet, Kemet. Kemet before that, that's a different thing. See, that's what I'm talking about. But obviously, I'm using the word that people tend to know. And also, yeah. the, the, the different cousins that they had. Okay. The people that were invaded, they had names for these people. So You've read, you know, sorry, sorry, you read Chancellor Williams' destruction of black civilization, yes? No, no, I traveled. I traveled. No, no, what you won't see in Egypt today, you won't see that graduation that no, was actually outlined by Chancellor Williams. Williams. I don't, know, I don't want to interrupt just because... You mean you don't want to interrupt, brother? You don't want to interrupt, brother? No, 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 it's no interruption. It's better that we have a thing like this than an actual fight because it means it builds confidence in what they're saying. Confidence is based on the word fidelious. Fidelity means truth. You understand me? I won't stand here unless I can actually answer questions. Does that make sense? That's why I start with them. The usual thing is I'll throw all this and then question answer at the end. I see you come with the first thing now. You understand? Next year I'm 60 years old. That means I've been studying and teaching now 35 years. Some of the people that you may actually be reading, I know them personally. You understand me? I have the reasonings with them. I'm not talking the stuff in the books. I'm talking the conversations outside of that. You understand me? How they live their lives. Yes? So, theory versus practice. Theory versus practice, yeah? If it's so bad in Britain, right? Being black in Britain, why do you not go back and live in a black country? <laughs> yeah, that's what you build towards. Does this make sense? Because I watched this for years, I've watched people going back, the shit's done, and how bad it is in here, and bad in that, and whatever. Why would you stay in a country while you're being abused? What are you teaching your children? To take it? To suffer it? Wow. I draw down on anything at any time. That's my entitlement. Like Marcus Garvey said, until Africa is free, I will consider the whole world as my country. Does this make sense? Without apology. Without apology. Shall I move on? Any other questions? Yeah, I'm fine. Sorry? Yeah. Right. The white and black fight. Inside you. Inside. Because the two are opposite. <laughs> the opposite poles are the same. You know what I mean? They're opposite. How do you how do you One say it? So other. so watch this. How can you say that white culture is conflicting when you don't know it? You're relying on a patriarchally based, half cut education system to make a kind of judgment call. All I know is that this is what I know. All I know is that the oppressor. And that's not known. Who are the oppressed within that pr oppression? Do you think that whites don't oppress whites? You don't. So you don't see class. You don't see class. You don't see underclass. Because the word class and caste is the same. No, 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 no. Caste is a Portuguese term meaning pure. That's what they that's what they came. The Portuguese went to India, they saw the actual grading system, like Brother Man says he saw in Egypt, and so what happens is they started to look on this thing, right? And they said, he's pure and there's impure. So they call me half caste. Half caste means pure. When a white person says that I'm half caste, they're saying that I'm half impure and that they are pure. If they call a black person calls me half caste, they're saying that I'm half pure. And they're acknowledging the status of impurity. You're being set up all the time. There's some words you should not be saying. Every time you recite the word black, you say the word lack inside. If you subtract the word we out of white, it leaves you with the central word hit. And if you get hit and you lack a defense, you're going to get knocked, the, uh, knocked out. <laughs> so a lot of the conditioning that we've actually received has been hard-cut, we haven't known, because watch this, 
I always joke, joke with people. I said, you want to do black studies? I said, you don't need black studies. You need white studies because you need to study the white people who's been actually conditioning you. What's this? Dr. Malana Karenga. So you're, as a you're, 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 sorry. You're kind of saying, saying <laughs> Yeah, but you see, the thing is, I'm not coming from a position of victim anymore. You see, what I did, what I did, I went off and studied. Dr. Lana Karanga has got a book called Introduction to Black Studies. He says there are three forms of black psychology. He calls it the traditional, the reformist, and the radical schools. Traditional, white psychology, right, applied to black people. For instance, white psychology, they don't call white psychology. They call it... Psychology. psychology. They don't call it white sociology, they call it... Sociology. So you see, what happens is they don't define the biggest trick the devil ever told was convincing the world that it didn't exist. Yeah? In Rwanda, Hutus, Tutsis, and what was the third tribe? Belgians. The Belgians. <laughs> the Belgians. You don't see the Belgians, they created the whole structure. Jealous at me. And this is what happens in situ. But if you don't understand, which Belgians did that? Which Belgians? What is the state of mind of this culture that's educating all of us? And then we start to fight against it. And sometimes it's like you're hitting, you're hitting a... What, so what's this? You go and get a qualification from a university. What's it actually saying? Oh, it's a European university. That's actually qualifying what's being said. By them. <laughs> So all I'm saying to you is this, I said when we read, I, I was raised with two books when I was a child, when I was four years old. Reading to some purpose and reading for meaning. You understand me? I read with purpose and I read with meaning. I'm a martial artist in my heart. I'm a child of Ogun. Does anybody here understand that? Yes. I'm a child of Ogun. I don't play, I'm a warrior. But as I've got older now, I've become a transformer. I'm a blacksmith. I have to transform things from one state to another. And all I meet is people. Ah! 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 Like last week, what's this? Last week I'm down in uh, Holland. I was there for a week, a week in Holland. Oh, Schwarty Pete! You know Schwarty Pete? Yeah. Schwarty Pete is. You don't know about Schwarty Pete? No. Oh, Schwarty Pete, Black Peter. Every year, what happens is St. Nicholas arrives. St. Nicholas is said to arrive, and he has a black servant called Peter. Schwarty Pete. And then what happens is white folk black up and they dress as uh, Renaissance Moors. They dress as Moors. But then what happens is the people there don't know Moorish history. So they look at those Moors and then they're going like, huh? Racism! Slavery! Racism! Racism! Slavery! And that's all the conversation is. You understand? I had to go over there last week and start kicking some ballistics. You understand me? We had to start dropping some realities about it. I don't like the Moors. I'll be straight with you. The Moors are the ones who gave the Enlightenment to Europe. <laughs> say, then, then watch this. It wasn't the Moors who got kicked up. They came round the corner to West Africa and started slaving down there. Wow. So that's what, the, Moor, the Moors were slavers as well. Yeah, have you seen that? Do you know a story called Robinson Crusoe? Have you heard of Robinson Crusoe? You know that, you know that he was in actual fact in the story, right? He, got, he was captured on his second voyage by Turkish pirates and was sold to the Moors in Morocco. He was a white slave for three and a half years. Then what happens is he escapes and he has a black servant, one of the black slaves with him that the Moors have taken from West Africa. And then what happens is, is he gets in this boat and then a Portuguese ship comes down and picks him up. The captain thinks that the black boy is his slave and buys him. Then when he goes down to Brazil, he uses that money to set up a plantation and he becomes a slave owner. Then what happens is when he gets shipwrecked, he's going to Guinea on a slave raid. Where does the word slave come from? Got nothing to do with black folk, has it? Slavic. So what people going on about white? You from Yugoslavia? Czechoslovakia? Yeah. We don't get taught accurate history. Yeah? So then we start using terms 
and we have ideas and beliefs, just not ours. Does that make sense? And by ours, I'm talking, look here. If someone sees me, someone says to me, yeah, well, you're light, you know, you're almost white, you know. Go and tell the bloody boneheads in Blackburn where I was raised. They may do. I had to fight, someone told me in this building, guy told me in this building, 1980, you don't know what it's like to be black. I said, what? I was raised in a white family in Blackburn. There was 153,000 guys in the town. There were six of us on the road who were mixed race or black. I had to fight. I had to stand my ground. I became a battler. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, man. So I find this whole thing entertaining. Any more questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Can I ask you about Queen Europa? Queen Europa. I don't know about Queen Europa, but the word Europa used to be applied to central Greece, then the whole Greek mainland, then the land behind Greece. And that's why Europe, which is the western peninsula of Europe, right, is a way to separate it off. Okay, you said you don't right? understand that, so can I ask anybody here? They've heard Europa before? Yeah. Europa Have you heard it before, anybody? Yeah. So anybody here who wants to research Europa, they'll have to find out about wars. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. So I will check it out. So what's this? You think about this now. Europeans, Europeans, what is the racial title given by Blumenbach? Okay. Okay. Caucasian. Take coke off Caucasian, it says what? Asian. You ever wonder why that a lot of white guys like to go out on the drink and then what they want at the end of the night is a curry? <laughs> Have you never noticed that? <laughs> my father. I'm going to move on. Is that okay? I'm going to move on. What's this? The importance of thoughts and feelings. It says, watch your feelings for they become thoughts. Watch your thoughts, for they become words. Watch your words, for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. Watch your habits, for they become character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Does that make sense? So you have to be careful what you utter comes from your mouth. Does that make sense? Because once you said it, it's about the, light, the, the world we're in now. You are <laughs> you get what I'm saying? That's why I love there's a, there's a there was a guy, a boxer, he found the, the address of the guy who was trolling him and told him he was coming for him. You understand me? And the guy's like, oh. <laughs> Sorry, send. <laughs> Used to be that if you disrespect somebody, yeah? So I've got a principle, I always say, uh, uh, about two, about two. If you're willing to say something about somebody, be willing to say it to their face. Does that make sense? Yes. Dr. Francis Press Wilson, Dr. Wilson said, we've got to get the stops and stopping gossiping is one of them. Does that make sense? Stop the gossiping and deal with that. Just, I tell you, you cut almost all the trouble out that you ever hear by stopping the gossips. Um, let me go here. Statement by Jeff Brown. I, I got this the other day when I was in uh, I, I was in Rotterdam, and what happened was, as a sister from Amsterdam, she sent me this e in an email. Yes, she sent it in an email to me, and I said I've got to I've got to put this in the presentation. It's up to you. It's always up to you. You can deny, repress, distort, and bury your unresolved wounds all you want. You can reframe them. Pseudo positivity them, detach from them, spiritual bypass them. You can rename yourself, hide away in a monastery, turn your story around, and you can spend all your money on superficial healing practices and hocus pocus practitioners, but it won't heal a damn thing. If you don't do the deeper work to excavate and heal your primary wounds because the material is still there, right where you left it, ruling your life and controlling your choices. This is the nature of unhealed material. It is alive, and one way or the other, it will manifest in your lived experience. It will language your inner narrative. It will obstruct your path and limit your possibilities. It lives everywhere that you live. 
And so you have to decide, excavate it and bring it into consciousness where it can be worked through and integrated or repress it and watch it rule your life. It's one of the hardest truths we have to face. If we don't deal with our stuff, it deals with us. There's no way around this, so choose. What have you heard tonight? What have you heard from Dr. African sister here? What have you heard? Yeah, you've got to deal with it. Does that make sense? Do you know that it? Do you know this it? Have you seen the film? What does Pennywise, what does he deal with? Thoughts and fears. Pennywise gets into your fears and then controls exactly what you're going to be thinking and doing. Does that make sense? So as a metaphor there, all the programming that's been put in us generationally needs to be coming out. We have to get it out and heal it. Yes, sir. I'm an old brother, there's many, many books. But if I, if I could ask you, out of all the books you read, which one would you recommend regarding spirituality? <laughs> Let me think about that during the thing and I'll get back to you on that. Please, yeah. please. All right. Traffic lights. Have you ever seen the traffic lights? Have you ever wondered why they're red, green, and gold? Yes. Who's that? What is it? Garrett Morgan. Garrett Morgan. It's also, you know, he's the guy who did hair straightening as well. You know that? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He did, uh, he did the actual cooking stuff for Conkin and everything. Yeah? Cooking stuff. This is the year. Cooking stuff. This is a patent from 1923. Though Morgan's was not the first traffic signal, that one was installed in London in 1868. It was an important innovation nonetheless. At the third position, but besides just stop and go, it regulated crossing vehicles more safer than any early signal. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the fact that when you see that, you know there's an invention by a person of African descent, no matter how confused he was, no matter what word name he had, right? He did that. But watch this now. Self-control. You know the chakra system, yeah? Okay, so what we have there, it's an inversion. You see this here? So we've got here the red, you've got the uh, amber, the orange, and then up to the heart, we missed the yellow. But then here, they've raised the red, the base here, to the head. Usually that's trouble, isn't it? Yeah. When you see red. Yeah, man, once you fall, once that red takes hold of you, you can be doing time. Does that make sense? So I, I ask you to consider this. And these two things here. Here's an ascending energy. There's a descending energy. What I ask you to do is get into this energy of the heart. Think about this now. The very few people know how to educate the heart. Does this make sense? I have this little session I do. I, I, I like doing it because my name will be now, right? Or be OB. Now I don't want to frighten some of you that don't the Jamaicans. <laughs> I don't want you to be too frightened. So watch this now. The word OB in Igbo means heart, wish, home and kindred, chief, lineage, soul, spirit, and shrine house. Mm -hmm. Oh you know B as well. Good, good people. <laughs> so, so watch this now, Obi, Obi, you call, you call the Obia man a heart man or a black heart man, true? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a guy called Orlando Patterson, he wrote a book called The Sociology of Slavery. And what he did, he actually said that in Jamaica, you spend Obia, they say O-B-I, O-B-I-A or O-B-E-A-H. Does that make sense? The three spellings to it. That what he did, he did a piece of inductive research, meaning he set out the premise before he did the research. He went to West Africa to find names that meant witchcraft. Witchcraft. Does this make sense? The word witch, what does it mean? What does the word witch mean? It means what though? German word witten, meaning witness, to see and to know. The witch is another word for wise. So in a couple of weeks, was it 10 days time? They'll say that wise men will go from the east and go and discover the baby Jesus. Does that make sense? It doesn't say three, by the way. 
That was pulling when they started this idea of racial constructs, of the white, the black, and the brown, the mix, the Semite, and all of this business. So they tried to say all oh, the people of the earth are going to go bow down to Christ. Does that make sense? So all of these things have been popped in there into the into the into the mind. So what ha what happens is this: we are, we have these colours. We have these colours. Make sense? The African colours, yes. You see these on the traffic lights. Okay. So what do we have? The scientific interaction of the four colours. We have the photosynthesis going down into the other things. What do, what do this represent? The black. Melanin. Melanin, or the skin. Which human beings do not have melanin? The melanin is Western Caribbean You said this like it was a superhero movie. <laughs> <laughs> All human beings have got melanin, except, except for very small things, what do you call the people who've gone totally white and blonde? So in albinism, it means an absence of melanin. Yes? Everybody got melanin. Yes? But here's the funny thing, the people with the least melanin are now pretending that it's a higher state of being. If melanin was money, I see some millionaires in here. <laughs> me, I'm just middle class. You understand me? But what I'm saying is, is that we've got this idea in our heads that black is life. Black means that you've got more than. Does that make sense? And instead of seeing it as a blessing, we see it as a curse. That's all biblical stuff. You understand this? So what do we have here? Photosynthesis time. What is the green? It's the chlorophyll. What's the red? It's the blood. So what we have here, symbiosis takes from here, oxygen goes from the plants to the humans. Yeah, and then carbon dioxide goes from the humans to the plants. Now who relies on who there in that relationship? Who relies on who? Do the trees rely on us? Do the trees rely on us? No. That's what I say. What, what it is, the trees don't rely on us. In actual fact, the trees tend to do very well without human beings. Yes? But what I mean is, we've got a set of human beings who've fallen out from nature. They don't, don't live a natural life. If you look at the ancient African education system, which was uh, looked up, was devised, uh, re sorry, recorded by the Kemetic references by R.A. Schwala de Lubis, and it was actually written as well by Asa G. Hilliard. What happens when you see that, they say that the first, of the, the first of the African educational system, the ancient system, was unity with nature. And to be unified with nature, you must learn to what? Breathe. Breathe. And that's the word that means <coughs> spirit. Inspire, expire. Inhale, exhale. Does this make sense? It's as simple as that. As simple as that. Then we have our diet, we eat either the plants directly or we eat them second hand by the animals that ate the plant. Anybody, anybody here eat caca fish? Who? Caca fish, you know caca fish? Mackerel. You know mackerel? <laughs> Why do they call it caca fish? Because it eats. Yeah. Why do you think it tastes that? It's got that special taste to it. <laughs> It's kind of nice and oily, isn't it? Yeah? So you're going caca fish. So we have the diet. Well then, please check this now. The human diet, there's a diet for the body, there's a diet for the mind, and a diet for the spirit. Would you agree? Okay, so what happens is, I used to teach the children back in the day, I used to call it the IBD, which is the internalized bullshit detector. You must always be able to sniff out things that are coming for you. Does that make sense? Always be questioning. Black skin, white mass, uh, the, the book? Franz Fanon. Franz Fanon. What does it say at the end of it? The final page says, Oh my body, make of me a man who always questions. A man who always questions. The word man does not mean male. It means mind. It's Sanskrit Indian. You hear that? Man does not mean male. It means mind. In Gothic language it means thought. Make sense? Okay, a man who always questions, a mind who always questions. The mind, why is the term used? He, she has mental health. Have you heard that? 
That person, oh, that person's got mental, well, I thought we're supposed to have mental health. <laughs> I thought he's supposed to be mentally healthy. <laughs> so what does it actually mean that they should be mentally healthy, no? Don't we mean a person has positive or negative mental state? Have you heard of the concept of democratic sanity? <laughs> Basically, if enough of you do it, it becomes fashion. You remember a few years ago, people walking around like Freemasons and one trouser leg rolled up? You remember that? Shell suits. One walking around with a trouser leg rolled up. Why? Why? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's another one now, because they used to have the jeans sagging as well. That was a good one, wasn't it? You know, you know. What, sorry. No, no, what's this? What's this little funny one? You know that? that, that if you remember, John, John, you remember those guys? Yeah, Chris Cross? John, John, why did they, why did they have the, what, what was their thing? They wore their clothes? Now, who in the USA wore their clothes back to front? No. That was a sagging, because that, that's poverty, or they take the belt off you when you get incarcerated. No! Rent boys! So the zip was there for easy access. You mean you didn't know that one? Do you not know why I have this bad reputation with some of the youths in school? They were walking around, one boy came out with his pants and like I said, what, do I look like a pig? <laughs> no man, you see, if you don't, you don't stop and question it, you let it in. Once you let it in, you don't question. You... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's called the heart, man. I don't know. Were you from Nigeria as well, yes? I thought you were taking your 419 money and turned it into, into weed. No? No! No! no. It's stereotyping. Stereotyping is a printing term. That means that every once you've made one print, one plate, all the other things are the same. Does that make sense? You have good and bad stereotypes. Yeah, working hard might be a good stereotype to have. Does that make sense? We see these are the stereotypes that go around. For instance, have you heard about the way that black guys are gifted? <laughs> have you heard? Have you heard about basketball? <laughs> oh no. I know what some of you were thinking though. But watch this now. Imagine that you go into a courtroom and you're down on a sex charge. And the jury's going like, oh, he's got a big one. Does this make sense? Those are stereotypes. That's why you have to be questioning things. Yeah? Mind control. When you control a human's thinking, you don't have to worry about their actions. You do not have to tell them not to stand here or go yonder, they will find their proper place and will stay in it. You do not have to send them to the back door, they will go there without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, they will cut onto their spe special benefit. Their education makes it necessary. What did this guy invent then? Carter G. Woodson. Excuse me! No! What did he invent? Black History Month. So what did he say? Carter G. Woodson, the founder of Black History Month, 1933. Book called The Miseducation of the Negro. A must. I said to one brother tonight, if you're watching Miseducation of the Negro, reading it, watch a film called Do the Right Thing by Spike Lee. There's a lot of things in there about the psychology of living in interracial, in interracial situations. Clashes that can take place. Uh, Twin Pillars of Consciousness. Dr. Malefi Asante, he said this in his book Afrocentricity. You have consciousness towards oppression, Unconsciousness towards victory. Right? Does this make sense? Read these out, please, now, when they come down. What was uh, what was uh, my sister? What was she doing before? Which one of the columns? Which color? Red or blue? Red. She was going for the red. 
what, what is the usual mind state of many black people? It's the blues, we got the blues. Make sense? There's a conscious choice that people are making to actually say, no, I'm gonna chase this. That's not to go in Clark Cuckoo Land. There's many people on this planet. What was this? How many Indians died at the hands of the... I'm talking not Red Indians, but I'm not from Indians are from India, East India. How many Indians died at the hands of Britain alone? The same 42. Just by starvation. Does this make sense? Now, do you think the Indians have got an apology to make to Britain? Do you think they apologise, the Indians? Okay, then watch this. The Chinese, how many opium addicts? Did the British create in China? 17 million. Do you think the Chinese go with apology to Britain? Fact, name me one Chinese MP. Name me one Chinese MP. None. The Chinese have got a special uh, martial art they do. It goes like this. The move goes like this. <laughs> they go right like that. You understand me? The Chinese don't care. They get on with their business everywhere. My Baba Lao, Chief of Delicon, what he did, he, he, was, he had some marshland in Lagos, in Nigeria, and said the Chinese, Chinese developers, developers came to him, and they said, can we buy this thing? And he said, he said yes, it's marshland now. He took it, they said, take it. Shopping mall on it now. Does this make sense? They develop. But, but watch this. The word African ends with the words I can. Whoa, oh dear. Psycho history. Psycho history is a science of historical motivations. It combines the insights of a psychotherapy with a research methodology of the social sciences to understand the emotional origin of the social and political behavior of groups and nations, past and present. This is the Association of Psycho History. I don't deal with history, I deal with psycho history. The guys that I work with, like Wade Mo in the past, like Wade Nobles, Pat Newton, etc., these people, right, they combine historical net knowledge and data with the effects on the human mind. Does that make sense? There's a book called The Falsification of African Consciousness by a brother called Dr. Amos Wilson. And in it, he coins the term psycho history. When we started teaching classes down in Manchester, back in 1991, what happened was that we had the uh, we had the book Introduction to Black Studies. Area one was history. Area seven was psychology. But what we knew was this: many many people did not want to study their history because of their psychology. So we moved psychology to number one and the history to number two. So we get into the mindset. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So psycho history. Please, those who are taking notes. And you haven't just to watch the goat, you just have come to watch the goldfish bowl, right? You're taking notes, please check the thing of psycho history. Why do I spell it like that? With a Y. Because the word hist means womb. So when I'm saying history, it's a story from the womb, which must include women. Does that make sense? Without the mother principle, you're not going anywhere. For instance, on your birthday, on your birthday, who gets the present? On your birthday, who gets the present? Who went into labor? How come a mother who has four children only gets one Mother's Day a year? Why is this patriarchally based system teaching us to depreciate women and sideline them from being in the center where they're supposed to be? Which African cultures always have that in. Wow, I tell you, I could do some busy, I could do some teaching, man. The need for black history. What did you see what happened then? Black. <laughs> this is a, probably the most important thing I'm gonna to say tonight, right? Just in a comparison. The Hebrew, because remember, we were given the uh, Judeo-Christianic religion, yes? So watch this. Jewish people originated in 1530 BC. Why would I say that? Who gave the laws of Judaism? Moses. Say Moses. 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 Moses is the lawgiver. You do not have a religion before that point. The people, they say, were called Hebrews. 
Right? That's the language of the culture. The religion became known as Judaism. Hebrew has no word for history. They do not have a word for it. The Hebrew term zakat means memory. Think about your computer for a minute. How do you, how do you actually uh, consider the power of a computer? And by the what? Ram. By the ram. That's our kunum. Kunum. <coughs> the creator god. Kunum. Yes? The ram. The power. Storage and retrieval. True? Yeah. Storage and retrieval. Jewish people, the Hebrew language that they speak, Hebrew has no word. It means memory. It's active and experiential. It also means to think, mention and record results from what? Purposeful action. Purposeful action. A lack of history is a form of amnesia. This is uh, the Latin like amnesia. It means forgetfulness, 18th century Greek. Definitions from Merriman Webster uh, Dictionary. One, the loss of memory due to brain injury, shock, fatigue, repression, or illness. A gap in one's memory. The selective overlook or ignoring of events. Of, our, of, of acts, it should be of acts that are not favorable or useful to one's purpose or position. State of amnesia among black people is what? <laughs> Watch this. If you go through a trauma, like I said, 1480 to 1780, European men exterminated between 9 and 14 million European women. If you're willing to kill your own mother, daughter, sister, auntie, grandma, whatever, what are they going to do to people who don't look like you? Do you see why it's necessary for you not to understand the white history and white psychology? I know as a fighter, man, what you used to do, Lance, isn't it? You get the chance to see your opponent, what do you do? You learn then, you learn to avoid, you learn to attack, you learn when to keep quiet, etc. Does that make sense? But what's happened is the whole heap of shouting and whatever, you say you don't know what you're dealing with. It's like pleading with a great white shark. Please don't need me. I've got family at home. What's the shark going to do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you need to use it, like I said, get that. Let no one say why you're looking back at the architecture, the ships, and metallurgy, and achievements of the old world. Surely these things happened thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago. No, no, no. This is the universe. Space, time, continuum. What happened 10,000 years ago or 10 minutes ago have the same relevance as they occupy the same space and time in consciousness. Your recall is very important. This is Dr. Ivan Van Sertum out of Guyana. What does he say? Nobody who thinks that the oldest traceable ancestor they can point to was a slave, nobody who thinks that can be anything but a sick man or woman. That's Mr. Van Sertum is saying that. Yes? Slave definition, chambers of slave, but just please check this one. Because when I found this definition out, I was like, oh my God. Because everything that Brother Africa was talking tonight and everything, I was like, wow, this is incredible. Simple definition. One whose will has lost the power of resistance. You no longer resist. You've got to eat it. You've got to have it. You've got to do whatever. Does this make sense? And that's a very powerful thing. You can be enslaved to anything. I know guys, watch this. They're enslaved to information and knowledge. Can't apply a damn thing about it. Stand there unemployed. Stand there, can't actually hold down the family together or anything. <laughs> they have all those things, but then what they can do? Yeah, yeah, well it's like this man because this and that and that and that and that. And I know this and I know that and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing with that, bro? How are you applying it, bro? How are you applying it? You got what I'm saying? You lose the power of resistance. Anything. Leave for cycle history. When I was... Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. So watch this now. This is a book, that Juicy High School. Well, this is their piece of black history. Juicy High School. 
This is what they were teaching. Black peoples of the Americas. This is the battle that was filmed in Glory. Remember the film Glory? Yeah. Denzel's first, uh, Denzel's first uh, Oscar? Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is what, this is the scene. But then look what's here. The shackles. Yeah? The first four paragraphs talk about the African past. I taught 28 lessons. 28 lessons referencing the four paragraphs. I could do it because I know it. Does that make sense? A local activist, a local guy here, reported me to the bloody, uh, what's he trying to report me to the Board of Governors for being racist, a so-called black man. Does this make sense? Yeah. Well, you see, what I'm is this, stick your head above the parapet, it's there to be hit, isn't it? But that's why you have to have your ogun, you have to have your sense of self and you have to fight. Does that make sense? But you take the fight to where it must go. Yeah? You take the fight to where it must go. That's why you need Oshossi, the pathfinder, showing you and cutting the path through. And then you have to get there fresh and be ready. Does that make sense? Healthy. Healthy. Yeah? What does it show? Constant exclusion and part from or, or participation. Does that make sense? This thing, the African past. Unacknowledged contributions. But all they want to do is keep you into a, a small, small pot. I love, I love uh, what's it called, Chris Rock. What do you learn about himself in school? Dr. Martin Luther King, what's the capital of Nairobi? Dr. Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> That's all they said. That's all they told you. Dr. Martin Luther King. Why? Because he was a safe option. Malcolm was the danger. And then, and then Martin Luther King, Dr. King, was the safe option until he started talking about the military industrial complex. Then he had to go. Does that make sense? What's the difference between Martin Luther King, Gandhi, and Malcolm X? Gandhi, he like Malcolm. There's no difference. All of them got shot. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Did I not? Did I not qualify my friend? Sorry. Here we go. This is finished. Lineage timeline is fixing no longer now. There's a general history taught by the system and society that focuses on the discredit to the scientific development and achievements of the last 500 years only. This can develop, can teach a restrictive worldview, which develops a will not to know. This is a, this is a piece of work I put together. And I'm not going to roll up the way I usually would. So sorry, could you go behind you? So what happens is... Oh, sorry. It is right. Just hang on a second. Can you hold that there? What we've got here... Junior, you're not supposed to look at it yourself. <laughs> Just look at it yourself. What's going on? It's, it's like... It's like... Hey. So what happens is... This strip of blue here... This strip of blue here is the Mayafa. This is Southern Enslavement. Sorry, this is northern enslavement. This is southern enslavement. The gold line going to here, this is the Arab enslavement. Does this make sense? Yeah. yeah. So you get, you get that, the distance? Yeah. Okay, can you roll it back? Just roll it back. Keep it rolling back, sorry. Can you move that way a bit? Yeah. That'll do, that'll do. So what we actually have here, you see the red, this is called BC, the blue is AD. This point round here, this is the point where they say Jesus of Nazareth was born, round here, 6 BC. Does this make sense? Yeah. So when an actual fight happens, we get restricted to this little, these little strips of blue here when you're enslaved by the Northern European or Southern European peoples. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let me uh, say, brother, what did you call before? The, uh, what was it, the invasion? I said that, I said, you said we went from Egypt to Kemet, yes? Okay, so watch this. We're going here, this is dynastic Kemet. This is pre-dynastic Kemet, yeah? But if you get a book by Robin Walker, he'll give you a book called When We Ruled. And he does what's called the long chronology. This is the one, this is the chronology that you'll get in most of the books that you read. So what happens is here, this is a dynastic period when uh, certain families started to rule. And then here, along the top, you have a green continued line. Goes all the way down to round here. 
That is the culture of Kemet. What you have is a black line running down, and this is, this is a political control of Kemet, which then stops at a certain point. As Dr. Africa said, we have a thing called Ma'af, as we said that the Persians came in, then the Hyksos were in, sorry, the Hyksos were in, then the Persians came in. These are what you call intermediate periods. But then what happens is, at this point here, this yellow line, this is the high point of Greek culture here. But when we go up here, guess what? This is the period the Greeks are actually in Kemet and turning into Egypt. Does this make sense? Yeah. I'm going to give you a quick version now. You understand me? But then what happens is, they go into the Greeks, then continue with the Romans. Here we have the fall of the Roman Empire, and then we have the control of the Eastern, Eastern Roman Empire, control Kemet. Then here, the Arabs invade. And from this point here, the Arabs come in, they take the number, they, sorry, they take the information with this line here into North Africa. This is the Moors in Spain. But there's a place here called Toledo, which is a translation school in Spain. And what happened was, the Europeans in their Reconquista, they're getting back into, the, back into Spain, taking over Iberia. What they do, they access the knowledge there, that goes on and it forms a thing called the Renaissance here, then the Enlightenment. And then this here underneath, this is a point that they're murdering their women at the same time. Is this making sense? Yeah, yeah. Now you see, this is a download from my head. That's from my head. I walk around with that in my head because I have to understand my African and my European ancestry. Does that make sense? Yeah? yeah. yeah? So I have to be able to recall factors to make myself complete, to make myself understand. So I don't go around with bullshit. So I know when someone's stepping to me, right, what they're actually about. I'll give it a go anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I try, man. Please drop it on the floor. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So I'll just finish now. We go quickly. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This because this is this is the funniest game of the lot. From 1989, sorry. Could you just ask where did you get them from? Uh, I think not telling. Them. <laughs> I'm not telling. No, we're gonna be we're gonna be selling them soon, very soon. I've been selling them for a long time, but we're gonna our next race. Are any available today? No. no. I've got one at Coffee New. Do you go to Junior's shop. Do you, you see how shameful that was? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a coffee new beer. What was it? 157, 157, Princess Road. Open. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, from 1989, I've been teaching in prisons. I started with Gar Prison and then into Full Sun Prison. So some of the guys and the man them from back in the day, Gooch, Donington, all them guys, some of the hillbillies were actually in my class together. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> who's, the, who's going like, oh. <laughs> Come here, head. Oh! You're in the other one. You're in the other one. You're in the other one. Sorry. Some, we were just some confused youngsters that don't use them no, labels. No, no. Don't me. label us, my Excuse brother. me, can, can I just go don't like Don't label this? us, please. Certain street organisations. <laughs> 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 we had, we had, Organisations such as the Boys Brigade, the Brownies, we had, we had all the Yeah, and I went scouts. to them. Before <laughs> I had to learn to earn money That's to feed myself. So what I was is that when I went into those prisons, over time I got into this idea of Ma'at. Dr. Africa, he mentioned that before. Ma'at. You see how it's characterised? He's by the sister, she got braided hair, she has the ostrich feather on her head. The reason they have the ostrich feather is the ostrich can turn its head to how many degrees? 360. What's the bird in Europe? Owl. It's the owl. And they call it the wise owl. And what happens is here, the ostrich, not only because it look up here, but it also goes into ground and starts to, they say it buries its head in the sand. Have you heard that before? Doesn't, it's not doing that. When its head is down, it's actually looking for small stones to help its digestion. Because they use it symbolically to represent the outer world and the inner world. Does that make sense? So I used to use, I used to show this here, the cosmology. This is how I remember the order of it. It says try just because our hearts require cleansing. What's the biggest killer in the Western world? Heart disease. Heart disease. Does that make sense? Of course it does. Hmm. 
So, what do we have here? Take the first letters, so it becomes the, uh, an acronym. Let it say it's here, a mnemonic, sorry. Truth, read this out, please. Truth, justice, justice. 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 Order, harmony, reciprocity. Reciprocity. What goes around comes around. Come on. Reciprocity. And then finally, this one. Guys, I used to teach. This is my true nature. Horace, you could say Horace is in. This is my true nature. I'm going to here. That you see this now. <laughs> every, every time they think of me, they always think, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I'll do something. What's this? The ostrich feather? We have 360 degrees. This is what I was showing. And please bear this in mind now. This is the judgment scene of my art. Does this make sense? Papyrus of Ani. Papyrus of Ani. Here the thing is, you've got Ani and his mother. Why would, why would the ancients put the symbol of the mother behind the defendant? What did Dr. Africa say? When does our, when does our formation start? It's in the womb. Hence the word history with a Y. Yes? So what happens is, you've got Ani's mother, you've got Ani, you got Meskinet and Remenet. There are small, small these these two natures of God here. We have Ani's bar or soul here, the bird. We have here Ani's heart. We have Ani's luck. The luck, his luck, good luck. We have the scale of justice. We have the nubis controlling the scale. We have the feather of Ma'at. And then some people say to me, oh, it means your heart must be lighter than, but it doesn't say that. It says your heart must be in balance. balance with the feather. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now we'll go here. We have Tahuti or Thoth. Do you know that's the root of the word thought? Thoth. Jehuti. Thoth. Thought in the Greek. Here we have Amit. They call this like a deep, it's made up of a crocodile, a leopard or lion, and a hippopotamus. All these were dangerous animals to the ancient Chemites. So they combine the beast, the monster, that would combine the fierce. That makes sense? Wasn't it what did Pennywise do? It, what did it do, Pennywise? Played on the darkest fears of the individuals. Ah, here we have Osar. Behind him was Set and Heru. And then here we have the presiding Netaru. Natures of God, there's only one God in Kemet, but there are natures of God. Same way I'm someone's son, I'm someone's brother, I'm a grandson, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, I'm all these different things. I, 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 I drive, I go to the doctors, I'm a patient, I'm a passenger, I'm all those different things to different people. I'm even a customer of Junius at Coffee Nubia. On 157, is it 157? Princess Road. 157 Princess Road, sorry. So what happens is, what happens is this? Watch this now. Imagine that you're incarcerated and you see this now. There is a defendant and his mother. There's the defendant's character being assessed. There's the defense counsel, the luck. There are the scales of justice, which is the process. And you see this guy here? He's a prosecution counsel. Anybody been in court here? Have you had QC after you? What did he try to do? Dig the dirt. The jackal can't eat fresh meat when it gets a kill. It buries it. And then after 36 hours and it's rotting, it goes back, sniffs it out, digs it up and eats it. Does this make sense? This guy's digging the dirt, controlling the scale. There's the court recorder. There's the prison system, getting ready to yam and get fat. <laughs> There's the judge. At the top we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 members of the jury. And there are the four persons of the jury reporting back to the judge. There are the social reporters, Meskinet and Remenet. They are the social reporters 
presided over the, pre the, sorry, the conception and pregnancy and then the birth and formative education of Ani. Is this making sense? Except for social reports. And what do we have? The background character. This symbol here, this Sphinx figure, represents the defendant's environment. It ends. <laughs> This thing is pre-dynastic. It's about 8,000 years old. This principle is being used today because as a, as a guy called Hunter Adams once said, there was a conference I put on 1997, and Hunter Adams said, Paul's given me this wonderful title, but what I'm gonna do is talk about my art, because my art is all there is. You're using their own thing, your own things on you. Your own things are being used on you. Does this make sense? And the thing is, is that, what's this? If I come and see your TV, when does it become not your TV? When you forget about it and you suffer from amnesia, a gap in one's history. Does that make sense? Modern usage. Feather of my art, onto this symbol here, onto this screen here, onto this shield here. Where was it? City Magistrates Court, Manchester. How many brothers and sisters have gone past that symbol and not come back out? <laughs> sorry, sorry, street or which street organization is <laughs> No, because of, well, what, what I'm saying is that you have these people called the Boy Scouts and they like knives and they have things called gang shows. And they always wear their colours. But they're acceptable, you see. <laughs> Manchester UK, I'll finish now. The message is this, do yourself justice. Yes. Know thyself. Yes. Know your business. And yes. watch this, try your best to know you and your business without going to like, white people and this and white people and that and, that, and, that, and, that, and, that, and all this business. Go and find that knowledge because it's right there. Make sense? Yeah. Go find yourself. Oh, I'm nothing else to say. Oh. <laughs>